the ultimate form of high quality video recording, but it's not without its drawbacks. Likewise, H.264 and H.265 give you nice and small file sizes, but the compression can really eat into the quality of your footage. So should you always take the middle ground, film in ProRes with the odd raw shot here and there? Or is this all a little more complicated than it may seem? Mainstream raw video started with RED and their RED code format. This was first seen with the RED one in 2007, Cinema DNG followed a couple of years later and quickly gained popularity. As it was an open file format, it was adopted by several different companies including Digital Bolex and far more importantly, Blackmagic Design. The original Pocket, Cinema and Production cameras bought raw recording to the masses for a very reasonable price. In fact, cheaper cameras gaining any kind of professional recording option is in part down to Blackmagic. But not everything was perfect. Cinema DNG files are certainly on the large side. My Blackmagic Pocket uses around 3.4 gigabytes per minute for normal speed 1080p. At that rate, cameras were eating their way through SD cards, SSDs, and hard drives. So why bother shooting RAW? And what is RAW? Well, normally when a camera records video, the sensor captures light. The light is converted into a frame and that is encoded with previous frames into a video file. During this process, all the parameters that the sensor uses to capture light are baked into the image. But raw recording skips the video encoding state. Instead, the raw file is recorded as is and turned into video when it comes to editing. This means sensor related settings such as ISO and white balance can be changed later without any adverse effect on the image. It is important to keep in mind that anything that happens before the sensor scan, such as shutter speed and aperture, can't be changed in post. This means that if you don't quite get the exposure settings right when you shoot, provided they're not too far off, they can be easily fixed. Compared to a H.264 video file, the difference is huge. Yes, you can still adjust white balance, but you're shifting the values of the pixels. Especially with an 8-bit 420 image, you can get some degradation in the image quality if you start pushing the image too far. In particular, you can start to see more compression artifacts or a general mushiness where there's just not enough information. There's a very big benefit for dynamic range too. It's not quite the case that RAW gives you more dynamic range it's more that it allows you to access the full dynamic range of the sensor. When shooting in a compressed format, the highlight and shadow areas of your image can easily become clipped out of the video signal, whereas because RAW hasn't yet been encoded, you can recover the lost detail. However, if the light values fall outside the range of the sensor, then unfortunately, that's it. No amount of shooting RAW is going to recover that. This is especially problematic for highlight recovery when shooting at a low ISO. If the signal gets clipped, because the sensor is already at such a low sensitivity, then the brightest areas of the sky are unfortunately out of range of the sensor. There's only so much light the sensor can handle. This is why it's a good idea to shoot at a higher ISO usually the camera's native ISO, which happens to be around 800 for a lot of cameras, and then use ND filters to get correct exposure. Then you have more room in post to decrease the sensitivity of the sensor if the highlights do clip. As dynamic range is one of the most important technical factors when getting a cinematic image, that's a big win for raw video. And when it comes to post-production, there are more benefits too. Because you're manipulating light data instead of hard pixel values, you can push the image around 
way more than you can ever hope to do with a regularly encoded image. And the raw footage will take much more punishment before it starts to break. There's also simply a lot of colour detail too. As most raw video has at least 12 bits, there's plenty of colour values to ensure no colour banding, which occurs when an image doesn't have enough data to handle a colour gradient. This extra colour detail can result in incredible looking footage, as well as making life easier for colour grading. It's better for green screen too. There's more detail around what's green and what isn't, resulting in a better green screen key. The differences are less obvious when compared to a high quality ProRes file, such as ProRes 422. When you compare RAW and ProRes side by side without any color grading, honestly they look completely identical. And most of the time, ProRes is giving you plenty of information to work with for color grading and VFX work. However, as soon as you start running into situations with challenging dynamic range, the advantages of RAW quickly become very clear. In the past, this resulted in a sort of hybrid workflow. Shoot ProRes for all of the shots that don't have crazy contrast in highlights and shadows, and only shoot RAW when you're in danger of losing the highlight detail. But this was back in the days of old-fashioned cinema DNG. But there are now new types of RAW recording. Camera companies figured out how to compress RAW and how to record it in a format halfway between RAW still files and video. There are now several options for compressed RAW video formats. Rotocode RAW was one of the first, but now Blackmagic RAW and ProRes RAW are gaining popularity too. And they're making efficient RAW recording far more accessible. In fact, these new formats are a very similar size to ProRes. So assuming you're using a relatively new camera, file size isn't really a disadvantage anymore. In fact, considering the increased flexibility of a regular ProRes, RAW starts to look very compelling. So, everything's fine, always use RAW. Well, not quite. This brings me on to the downside of the new RAW formats. Workflow. Now it's true that editing RAW is slightly more complicated than editing ProRes, however it's really not that much of a problem. RAW isn't that much harder for your computer to edit either. The main workflow issue that I see is compatibility. Redcode Draw is supported by nearly every professional NLE, but it's only available on red cameras, and you'll struggle to get one of those for less than £10,000. Add accessories and the price rises very quickly from there. Thankfully, Blackmagic cameras are much cheaper, and all their new cameras can record in Blackmagic RAW. However, support has only just come to Premiere Pro, and if you use Final Cut Pro X, well, you're out of luck. I think there are still some other programs that have yet to support Blackmagic RAW 2. This isn't too much of an issue though, as chances are, if you buy a Blackmagic camera, you're going to be, at the very least, grading your footage in DaVinci Resolve if not actually doing all your editing there too, especially considering that most Blackmagic cameras now come with the full version of DaVinci Resolve. For me, what's more of a problem is ProRes RAW. It's supported by all major editing programs, except one. Any guesses to which program? DaVinci Resolve. As a Resolve user myself, this is incredibly annoying. It could be down to competition between Blackmagic and Atomos. I struggle to believe that Apple would be the problem considering how much collaboration there appears to have been in recent years. But whatever Blackmagic's policy on Atomos is, I would really like to see ProRes RAW support in DaVinci Resolve. It is, after all, meant to be one of the industry-leading applications in post-production. And from what I can tell, ProRes RAW is gaining more traction than Blackmagic RAW. Blackmagic RAW is a great file format, but just look at the number of cameras that Atomos is supporting, and the list keeps growing. Not to mention the DJI Zen Muse that can record ProRes RAW internally. Hopefully this mess of different formats will sort itself out. As much as I understand Blackmagic's desire to push its own format and make its cameras competitive, I think they'd do better acknowledging the existence of a rival RAW file format and supporting it. Otherwise, they are giving people more of a reason to use Final Cut Pro X. Final Cut Pro X has been getting better and better, so whilst Resolve still has many advantages, I think they should be careful regarding ProRes RAW support. But after all that, is shooting RAW worth it? Absolutely yes. In fact, unless you're recording something really long like an interview or a sports game or a live performance, you can pretty much shoot RAW all the time. Just choose the appropriate level of compression depending on what you're shooting. You have much more room for color correction and color grading than highly compressed formats such as H.264 and H.265. And there's barely any file size difference compared to ProRes. Just make sure that your choice of camera, recorder, and NLE are all compatible 
otherwise you'll be in for several headaches when it comes time to edit.